Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Oral sodomy. Oral sodomy? Oh, oral sodomy. Okay, well, that's why it's a small town. Yeah, we'll look into it. Thank you for calling. This is episode 249, recorded December 27th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. So you're telling me it was oral sodomy, huh? We've yeah, hit yeah, a we've hit a new low. We've hit a new yeah. low oh, here. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> Got a shovel. <laughs> the director, uh, the director of this film, Philippe Mora, said he saw that at a newspaper in Mississippi while they were there, and he just had to slide that in there because oh, he had no yeah, idea what I it was. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. What is oral sodomy? We don't. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm your host, Jeff Moore. And this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host, Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic, or sometimes not so classic, film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl, and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. Crystal, how you doing? Did you have a merry... Christmas? I did. Yeah. I'm glad it's over, though. I'm always glad when Christmas is over. <laughs> Honestly, it's so stressful. It is. It's stressful. Can... It's stressful when you have kids and stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. it kind of sucks all the fun out of it. But, One you know, holiday that shouldn't be stressful. <laughs> is <all> the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Fun out of it. yeah. Okay. Uh, also joining us is Chad Hutt, Kyle McGurgis, and co-host of Decades of Horror, the All of Them. How you doing, Chad? How was your holiday? I mean, it, it was okay. It was stressful. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It was okay. It was stressful. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad it's over, too. Y yep. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here, high five. There you I go. Want Hall I want Halloween to come back. Yep. Oh. Here, yeah. Here. No. Okay. Dear God. Dear God. No, okay. I'm way off on this crap. <laughs> and last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru. Oh shit. Uh, and and someone who is uh, aspiring to swim with the manatee. Mm, How you doing, Bill? Nice. Uh, oh, just peachy today. Today's my birthday. So that's and... what oral sodomy is. Oh, happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yes. Happy birthday, Bill. It's been great. I'm out in Florida, and um, the weather's nice, so I'll probably be doing uh, a lot of walking. A lot of walking. Okay. That yeah. sounds fun. Because the weather's nice? Oh. No, because oh, my I car broke. It. I get it. Anyway, yeah. Oh! Uh, oh right. I didn't no, want to open that, up that can of worms. No, yeah, that no, no. actually completely it's, went uh, over it's, my head. It's well, at least fresh, you weren't in Wichita. Room. That's where my car broke. Well, thank God. Yeah, see, normally I'd be visiting my <laughs> girls out in um, Minnesota before they moved here, and having oh, your car yeah. break down in Minnesota is... is Could like, have been worse. They find your frozen partially mm -hmm. gnawed bones, you know, with a bunch of wolverines fighting over the scraps, so... Yeah, so I'll figure out a way to get back to North Carolina in a couple of days, and we'll see where we go from there. But anyway, it's great to see you guys. It's really great to see you guys after this day. It's been yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. We're glad though. to have you. Great, glad yeah, to have yeah. you all here. Thank you. Uh, Decades of Horror <laughs> partners with Play Now Media, and in particular, Decades for the 1980s is on the Wicked Horror TV channel, and I now have all of the back issues. Uh, back issues, back episodes are uploaded. Nice. Um, all the video ones. And our first video episode was The Hitcher. I believe it was. Wow. I believe it was like 171, something like that. So, so you can watch them in rate, order and see the three of us age and Crystal somehow mysteriously boy, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> As I was yeah. going through these, it was like. Oh my God! You get back to the hitcher, and I got hair. Yeah. <laughs> really? That's funny. I, Do you really? And I'm out in the other part of the room, and I'm, you know. Anyway. Do it you is. think it looks better then or now? Oh, I don't know. Hopefully, we're a little more polished, or maybe a little hmm. less worried about it. Either way. <laughs> Didn't we use yeah. Zoom or something back then? Uh, it was different than what. No, we, we said when we started with video, we did this. 
We did stream yard. Hmm, stream yard? Okay. Oh, we did Zoom when we did the things. calls. Yeah, I think so, hmm. right? Or something like that. Uh, we did Discord when we were doing the calls for a while. That's it. Discord. That's right. Jeez. That's been Before a long that, we had time. two Dixie cups with a string between them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then we then we did. Uh, you hear me now? Skype, and we had to use a <laughs> Why weird. Is it so, so anyway, <laughs> well, my Christmas was wonderful, except. <laughs> oh God. So your your day, Christmas we were, was good. Well, on good. Christmas Day, we were getting ready to go over to my mother in law's because we saw my kids' family the day before. Now, whoever, you know, if you're keeping time, we haven't started talking about the movie yet. Uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, So we were getting ready to go over and see my mother-in-law, and she calls up and says, oh, I got a sore throat. Oh, no. Uh, so my wife took her down to the emergency room. COVID positive. Mm. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, no. But then your wife so was, was around her. So Yeah, so that's the thing. I haven't been around her, but my wife's been around her a lot. Right. In the, in the last week. So, so far... So good, so, still negative. Wood. Good. So mm -hmm. anyway, and she's feeling she better, all right? Good. Okay. Yes, and, and she's ninety-one or ninety-two. Oh, wow. So I was yeah. very happy about that. That yeah. she started to recover quickly. All righty, folks, we got a movie to cover. Oh, we got um, a movie, right? Yeah, we do. Uh, so on this podcast, we start out by giving a few details. Of the film we're covering, our first impression, some taglines, and then take off down the road. And uh, it's time to announce our topic is The Beast Within. Hey, Aunt Sarah. <laughs> Released in <laughs> 1982. <laughs> Directed by Philippe Mora. Written by Tom Holland. Based on the novel by Edward Levy, which we'll talk about that. Hmm. Uh, the cast is an cast. amazing cast. Uh, and I put a pretty long list up here just because they're all great character actors. Ronnie Cox, B.B. Besh, Paul Clemens, R.G. Armstrong. Oh, Paul Clemens again. L.Q. Hmm. Jones. <laughs> well, he does have a double person. He does. He plays the beast and he plays, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, LQ Jones, Logan Ramsey, John Dennis Johnston, Ron Sobel, Luke Askew, and Meshach Taylor. The protection company is Kotska, which is distributed by United Artists. It was filmed in Mississippi around Bolton, Yay. Jackson, and Raymond. Filming dates February 9th <laughs> through April 10th, 1981. The release date was February 12th, 1982. The budget, $5 million. Domestic mm. box office, $7.7 mm. Not a Not a resounding not hit. Yeah. That, I would, I if never... I made $2 million, I'd think that was a hit. That's no, delicious. You don't get to keep no, well, I don't, that. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think they spent a lot of money on the... Uh, marketing either i think it might be one of those ones they didn't know what to do with but yeah. synopsis a young woman gets raped by a mysterious man creature and years later her son begins a horrific transformation into a similar beast now i almost changed that but they didn't really follow the script in the script mm -hmm. it was a cicada creature like uh mm -hmm. like this was a weird cicada movie <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to but he ends up being kind of a man creature. So, yeah. and there he is. Yeah, look at him, kind of man creature. It, it doesn't look much like a cicada in the hospital. All righty. Well, we got some. We got some effects here. This yeah. happens to have been Chad's pick. So we will start with Chad. It feels like a Chad's pick. What do it you does. mean? I love this movie. Really? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, um, I do too. It's uh, just freaky and weird and uh, just out there enough for me to love the hell out of it. I, uh, I remember I saw this. Uh, I've rented it, I think. But I remember when it was theatrically uh, coming out and I'd see the um, um, commercials for it or trailers on TV. And it promised the most shocking transformation in movie mm -hmm. history and blah 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 and uh of a man into a creature uh, 
can't remember exactly, but that was it. So I went to the theater and saw it, and I was like, somebody really loves <laughs> bladders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bladder effects. And uh, I wasn't – I, I love the story behind it. I love the uh, – the mystery behind it where you kind of had to figure out what was going on. And uh, I still think it's a great story if it was done properly, I guess, probably be done better today, but uh, I liked it. I really did. And, and uh, it was for a creature feature mm -hmm. uh, back in 82 um, for a young teenager as myself. I uh, couldn't ask for much more than that. And uh, it's a little cringy in some places by today's, uh, standards, but, um, or some people might think so, but I really did love it. And I still love it. Um, even though I've watched this like 10 times or so, I've never recalled hearing the conversation of oral, uh, sodomy, uh, anywhere. <laughs> oh, and I was glad of that until now, till today. <laughs> But uh, I was glad of that until now too. Yeah. Yay! So, and and it does have some great character yeah, actors in there. Yeah, and uh, you know, and the, some who we've seen time and time again uh, covering these movies, and um, I really like their acting in it. And it was, it was just a cool movie. It, it just holds a place in my heart for some reason, and uh, I like it. Still like it. Yeah. Did you see that at the theater? Me, I don't think I saw it at the theater. I remember renting it when it came out. I think this one was a was a yeah, it was an R. All right, appreciate it. Well, let's hear from Crystal Cleveland. What did you think of the Beast? This was my beast? first time seeing this, and I okay, so I loved this film. It was super fun. Um, the transformation i think was phenomenal and it was so long mm -hmm. like was it the best edits at point there no because he goes from this big double head to one head but yeah. whatever i don't care <laughs> like as far as 80s effects go honestly i was a little blown away by the effects watching it even now i was like dang this is killing it here like that that was very impressive the acting was so good it was <laughs> it was far better than it had any right to be i think this is some of the best acting i've seen in an 80s movie like there's very few 80s movies that have acting that's this good now my big issue is the story is just garbage it's just it's just trash i love the idea of what they were trying to go for so i like obviously i like i said i love the movie i cannot believe i've never seen this before because it's really, really good. Okay. But the story is. It gets convoluted and confusing. Um, that's, some point. that's to say the least. Like what would make more sense is if he didn't become his father and just became the cicada thing instead. Like you, like then you could assume that his father went through the same transition and then did that to the mom and then died. Like, we didn't need this. Well, his we, father we, was possessing him. Yeah. Yeah, how? Now, who the hell? Well, apparently. That's what I'm saying. There's like, a that's point where he got into some, say they mentioned somehow that he used witchcraft or something like that to use, to pass mm. along this. Mm, yeah, but that. that that's why that's he raped good. the girl at the end, I, so he would I, carry I, it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like he had done. in the. But see, I think they could have done the same thing without the possession portion of it. I feel like. I feel like it would have been better even if they had just like his, maybe even he just had some, some of the same memories as his father yeah, instead of the action. The possession stuff is just, that adds a whole nother story to this whole him becoming a cicada already. Yeah. And then he's becoming a cicada and his father is possessed. Mm. But if they had just focused on one, on the because that's cool. I could see that he became this creature and then got out and then raped the mother, the son. He, he, you know, passed that, whatever that weird stuff was onto the son. And then the son was repeating the same, actually, you know, the same thing, like, of mm. course. So it kind of wound up the same full yeah. circle, which I actually respect that in films too. I love the idea of that, but yeah, they lost me a little bit in the story. They, they had, they had some points that didn't make sense, but 
I mean, it is an 80s movie. Hmm. Like, lots of 80s movies to <laughs> So I kind of forgive that too, well, you know, like, but I loved it. I can't believe I haven't seen it. I'm really disappointed in myself because it's good. I, I've never, I don't even think I've ever heard anyone talk about this film. I don't think it's even oh, wow. played. It's never really, yeah. I think it played on no. Cinemax or HBO way back. Uh, but oh, I can it, vouch for that. You don't see yeah, it anywhere what, else. I get, and see, that's part of it. Like if I didn't have any access to it, of course, you know, I had to get what I could yeah. get, mm -hmm. but the the dude the lead dude dear god the acting y'all the acting i was just like okay this is really really good when he was like having a seizure yeah i enjoyed okay. it i'm glad i'm really glad i watched it agreed agreed mm -hmm. yeah. all right <laughs> bill mulligan well what did you first see? i didn't like letter? it but i enjoyed it okay so i first saw this okay. on cinemax or hbo back in the day um, and I was looking forward to seeing it because I really bought the hype about this is the most amazing transformation ever. By the time I saw it, I had seen The Howling, American Werewolf in London, Cat People, a bunch of movies that really, really raised the bar. And when I saw this, I was not impressed. Looking at it now, it does. I do enjoy the, the cheesy 80-ness of it. But no, the transformation doesn't make any sense. That giant tongue rolling out and it's like... <laughs> I love it, though. I don't come care. Come on. Um, uh, you but, mean, and, uh, you're yes, <laughs> that's from go. Jeff's private stash. That's uh, that no. me that's on the oral sodomy. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, yeah. I hope you know that 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 you do know that that's what the point of that's what oral sodomy is, obviously, y'all. Well, what, what, uh, obviously, uh, y'all, uh, 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 what, the, what the director right said down, was yeah. he he called up a lawyer and they said, Well, there's it, it's a uh. It's a legal term in the South that basically means any kind of sodomy. So I, I don't, I don't know. That doesn't make sense mm. to me, but okay. That mm. sounds even more suspect than the original. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. contact the mouth. Mm. Oh, yeah, right. it's it's contact between the mouth and anything, which apparently is illegal in the South. So for those of us who are not, for those of you listeners out in the South, you're glad you're not in Dixie. Hooray! hooray. I grew up in the South, and I never. <laughs> And I grew up around some shady ass characters. Well, we're not saying that. I've never heard any of them say that. Well, that's, that's a funny. Like, that's a funny line, though. That's why it's a yeah. small you know, town. There's, there's some laws. <laughs> there's some laws that never actually get applied. Like you can't ride a horse on Sunday while wearing a hat. You know, whatever. And, oh yeah. You know, every now and then someone's put to death for, it and it's like, wow, I didn't know that was still on the books. Anyway, um, so Crystal really hit the right thing. The acting in this is really good because there's a lot of really good actors. Um, mm -hmm. The monster stuff sort of gets silly and in the way of the fact that this this could have been actually a pretty good crime story. You know, the, 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 they're covering up the fact that they had this serial killer and a lot of da 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 all kinds of stuff there. The problem is, it makes it doesn't make even a damn lick of sense because yeah, yeah. this guy is like well billy whatever his name was he was a strange fella hey I, i've been watching the movie he was a flipping monster he was a gooey puffy headed monster uh, and apparently if i understand it correctly he had an affair with some farmer's wife the farmer caught him locked him in the basement probably just threw him little scraps of meat and stuff yep. so yeah. basically it's like curse of the werewolf over time he just <clears throat> degenerated into this filthy geek and everything and he'd be disgusting and scabby and with shankers and but he would not turn into a giant puffy headed monster and the other thing is just like in curse of the werewolf it, it just because you turn someone into a beast by treating them in a beastly way if they rape someone and she gets pregnant that is not passed on to the child i think we can all agree that's yeah, not how evolution works suspend reality yeah i it. yeah but i can suspend reality up to a point the idea that an evil person can pass on their evil okay some people are born sociopaths though so Paul seemed like a perfectly nice kid up until he started turning into a cicada monster. Oh, by the way, at no point in this movie is there anything cicada-like about him except that weird sound that every sound. now and then starts mm -hmm. coming out of him that sounds like a synthesizer and doesn't really sound like a cicada. They should have had some scene where they find like his crusty epidermis that's been left on a tree. Or they do. Whatever. Oh, they do. Oh, they, they did. Do. I, I must have stuck yeah. right through that. Um, right, at, right at the end. <laughs> oh, I, okay. Yeah. Um, no, I just didn't get it. And I, I, I kept losing track of whether he was supposed to be in a bed or if he was wandering the town free. And 
the story just doesn't come together. It doesn't do justice to the excellent acting. But I will say I did enjoy it. This is a very 80s movie. This is this is right up there with um, humanoids from the deep, and like it was like you want to know what an eighty what the eighties were like. Here's some beast within some uh, you know humanoids from the deep. But I remember when we did humanoids from the deep way way back when one of the first ones we did we were wasn't that our first one? Was it? Yeah, we were complaining no, about the it was, it was close it was close, but we were complaining close. about the science in that one. The science in that one could be taught in a university compared to the science in this. I mean, you know, you're trying to grow big salmon and you end up with giant rapey fish. Well, unless you ask yeah, Jerry okay. Chandler, then you get the science. Still then you get the science, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, okay, so so look, it's this, this is a pretty, pretty cheesy movie in some ways, but it is a great throwback to the 80s. And it's got some really good actors who are not winking at the camera. They are playing it 100% mm -hmm. straight, which I appreciate. I was laughing at the transformation scene, but when they cut to, to you know, his mom and everyone else watching it, they were just frozen there, just mm -hmm. watching it happen. So they, and they could cut to this, you know, the thing a little bit changed. Yeah. The bladder effects. I was not super impressed with the bladder effects, <laughs> you know, not compared to American werewolf or howling or any of those, but I do appreciate a good monster. And, um, Tom you know, there's Berman did that and he's, yeah, he's a, there was some he's cool, a well-respected man. Yeah. There were some cool yeah. deaths in this too. The electrocution. It's just that I think some of the things I enjoyed the most was like the scene with the old man and the raw hamburger, which didn't require <laughs> a whole lot of yes. effect and everything, but I was like completely it was gross. enraptured watching this scene and there's everything great, where they were going. Scene. Yeah. It was really well made and you know how it's going to end, but the, the actors and everything, the, there's some characterization that's put in there because you have you have good character actors even if you don't write them particularly well you get some good characterization out of it so while i was watching i was like this is pretty stupid when it was over i felt like you know i think i'll watch this again i haven't done that yet but it it it, it does bear repeating it doesn't get talked about much it did fall kind of between the cracks and mm -hmm. um, i'm not exactly sure why i I don't know either, and uh, the filmmakers kind of couldn't figure it out either. But I, I actually saw this in the theater. Oh wow! Oh wow! I think because it came shortly after American Werewolf in London and The Howling, and so the effects and you know had gotten so good that when they were, you know, pitching this the way they did, I thought I'd I'm going to go see this. Now I don't remember thinking anything particularly negative about the effects then what i remember is i i would have sworn that the rape scenes were even more graphic mm. you know that that's the impression in my mind so at, at that time i was uh felt much more uncomfortable about it than i do now <laughs> if that makes any sense maybe because of you know uh, tens of thousands of horror movies since then um but uh, I love it. And I, I'm with everybody here. I love the acting. I think there's a real touch in here with a lot of the uh, cinematography and stuff. The the night scenes are like perfectly shot. They're not too dark. They're not too light. Mm. You know, they're, you could tell what's going on, but when stuff's, I don't know, I, you know, that's, a, that's not an easy thing to do apparently because a lot of films screw it up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah they'll look like they're in the daylight when it's yeah, a nice it was lit scene. perfectly. You could see what yeah. everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a lot of good angles and stuff too. Although a couple of them I was a little confused about, but at any rate, and now I think, uh, oh, and the music too. I thought the music was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. A lot of tension. So I had a lot of tension watching this movie. Now a lot of good, yeah. good spots here. Um, all right, so I, I want to talk a little bit about what you guys have all been talking about the story. So uh, there's a there is a uh, Blu-ray from Scream Factory that has two Leave commentaries. <laughs> one one uh, commentary is uh, Tom Holland, the writer, mm -hmm. and uh -huh. the other commentary is Philippe Mora, the director, and <laughs> Paul Clements. Uh, <laughs> The beast mm -hmm. the beast so anyway uh so between these and they don't 
all say the same thing, but between them, the general impression I got was number one, the rushes were going back to the studio before they could see him. And so the what? studio was kind of messing with stuff. Hmm. They felt like uh, Tom Holland. So some, some things were cut, which is sounds really weird why they cut them. <laughs> like for instance, the, the scene where they, uh, the beast rips the judge's <clears throat> head off through the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had, they had it, the blood and his bow tie fell into the toilet bowl in the cell. <laughs> the camera, <laughs> they and the camera that. looked down at that. They took that out. We can't, we can't I, be showing that bow tie in the toilet. I'm oh, like, no. what the hell? He well, said, what would have been, out why, but... <laughs> what would have been funnier is if he had his hair back on and the hair was also. Oh yeah. Like that. Yeah. And so that, that's one, uh, thing. There was, uh, Another thing, when uh, in the in the final rapes, yeah, you know, here's the note. How many how many movies do you know that start with an interspecies rape scene and end yeah. with an interspecies rape scene? But anyway, no, not uh, many. so Paul Clements is the guy in the suit in the last one, and he Mora was yelling directions at him, and he couldn't hear him, and he couldn't see very good. So Mora didn't think there was enough movement going on, so he comes up behind. Paul Clemens and is pushing on his butt. <laughs> Get some motion going there. And so when the rushes went, they went back to the studio and and they're like, hey, this is a this is a great scene. It's oh wow. So we got a lot of tension. And, uh, but what's with that hand, you know? And, and <laughs> you could see a, the hand at, at then <laughs> before it was edited or anything. Right? Oh, okay. So you know, they had to edit it. So he had to explain that to him. And I just Thought that was a funny story, but then Tom Holland talks about it. he felt like he kind of described us, and you guys maybe maybe Bill and uh, well the three of you have all been involved in making some movies, so maybe you can uh, confirm this or not. But according to Tom Holland, he felt like they cut out exposition out of his story, mm -hmm. and that he said a lot of times that's what happens if they decide it's too long. Oh, yeah. And I they're going to cut first. stuff. Yep. They're mm -hmm. going to cut the exposition first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. figure people will figure it out from this line here. So the information is there, but you can't, you can't miss anything. <laughs> There's just little lines here and there. So according to him, the original story was this thing down in the basement had started. They were letting them out to kill people. You know how they ended up with like 30 bodies oh. or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that the, uh, Native, the local Native American tribe put a curse on him, and that's where the cicada thing comes in. So, like, okay. turned him into a shape shifter or something or another. Where where he's possessed by the 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 original guy by his by his biological father, so to speak. I got no idea. But yeah, I don't think Agatha Christie could have deduced anything from the clues that they gave us that that so was, then, what was going on. Well, he all the way through, he's going, oh, they cut that part. Oh, they cut that yeah. out. And then, but, but at the end, he was very complimentary about it. You know, that it was, you know, I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with this. I haven't watched this for like, you know, 30 years. And I'm, I'd I'm read enjoying that. this. But, I'd read that as well, that that's the reason why. That's why it was, like I was saying before earlier, it was like witchcraft or something like that, that kept this, Right, right. Curse going from father mm -hmm. to son, and well, and I didn't get it, but Ron Sobel, the guy that was drinking beer out there, mm -hmm. yeah, that the creature killed, he was one of the ones that helped dig the bodies up. Um, he was supposed to be a Native American. I I missed uh, that. I didn't get that. Yeah, see, so it's it's know. hard to it's hard to have any sympathy or anything with the the idea of this creature going around killing these people who done him wrong or whatever, when we don't know what they done. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if it was wrong. So, yeah. And Tom Holland thought they must have <clears> cut <throat> some transitions too, because like, you know, you're one place and all of a sudden now right. I'm in another place with a mm -hmm. bunch of other people. And I don't really know mm -hmm. how, you know, what's, what's going on anyway. Um, I didn't have a problem with that, but I could, I could see what he was talking about, but we also have to uh, realize that this is, Mora's first job directing hmm. uh, theatrical release, and this was Holland's first script that hmm. he sold for a 
quote unquote Hollywood movie. So more that was the way before he went on to do all those howling non sequels. <laughs> that have nothing to do with the howling. We'll talk about I love the howling. He's, he's an interesting love guy. Him. Love. Um, yes, he is. Uh, and and it, it was funny listening to him because I, I anyway. Um, both of them. I I I, I just thought it was great. Now, uh, the transit, the uh, transformations at Holland thought they went way too nuts on it. Hmm. Mora said he loved it and he kind of felt like i i didn't catch him saying this that there was humor in it or not but he said you know they have those they'd have like the tubes shoved into the bladders and stuff and the guys behind the scenes or under the bed or whatever uh and he kept hollering more air more air <laughs> so <laughs> he he's the it. one he's yeah. the reason it went and apparently he got his way in the editing. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, as a special what, effects, I, I understand you, bladder effects take a long time to set up, a long time to shoot. And normally, when you see them on the screen, they last so almost subliminally that you barely even notice that it was done. So, from the special effects guy standpoint, it's like people are barely seeing my work. But that's the way to do it. Because if they go on for too long, it's pretty obvious. I got a balloon under some fake skin on this guy, and it's it's puffing up and everything. It's cool, but it doesn't look remotely real. Whereas if you're quick about it, there's something this there. This guy has something's wrong with him. There's something under his skin, but I didn't get a chance to really look at it. It, it doesn't reveal itself. It sells the illusion of transformation without giving away that it's just a magic trick. So the, the best way I've ever seen it done is it is the howling act, the original howling when Eddie uh, Quist is, uh, I can't remember if it was D Wallace or her friend that came after to investigate. He had her trapped in this office, right? You know, right. and he started to change and mm -hmm. and the the editing on that was perfect because it the lighting cut. on that scene was yes. really good. It and, hit a lot, and it would cut it would cut it to just the right time. Mm -hmm. Didn't last too long. And it just made that whole scene a lot more right. effective. I think here they were trying to show off how cool right. of a monster. Well, this is, really this is in have. pure, the harsh light of a hospital room. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. no, there's nothing. I, I'm thinking, do you have that? I think you had a shot of that. Yeah. Look at that one second oh, that, from the that. bottom. Dang. He looks like the elephant yeah. man. It looks That's, awesome. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Human being. Well, I, I dug it this time around, but I can also see how it, it kind of looks like He's blowing little bubblegum bubbles, bubbles <laughs> out the side of his face. But but the thing that I really liked, which I know looked absolutely ridiculous, was when his head blew up like a watermelon or a beach ball or something. Yeah. Yeah. Brains but out. when it showed the the skin splitting, you know, coming mm -hmm. down across the eye, I I don't know. That I, I'm with you. On one it hand, good. it looked ridiculous, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, it creeped me out. Mm -hmm. It was I, it, I thought it was tiny little tongue sticking out. For what it is, I thought it was just the most awesome thing I've, yeah. <laughs> I've ever seen. So, so uh, yeah, and and Holland was disappointed that they didn't try to do something because he said my script was a cicada, you know, mm -hmm. and so it never, uh, we never got anything remotely suggesting insect, you know, no. Yeah. They didn't even try to go with legs or feelers or spines on his hands or anything like that. It was just mm -hmm. just the, the gooey monster. So apparently part of the curse is becoming uh, booger from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> in <the> second picture. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's that? You've you've talked about this before, uh, Bill, but the stuff, the slimy, the material they use for the yeah. slime. Like Vaseline or called? something. Well, the, or something? The methyl cellulose is one of those things. Yes, yes. Uh <laughs> He, it does look wet. Yeah, yeah, Paul Clement said he had us fill all that stuff. Yeah, a little he, goes a long way. Don't Ooh, they use that, that for Twinkies? They, they use it, yeah, they use it for a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, in the right amount. Twinkies, yeah. yeah, it just thickens things up, and in the wrong amounts, it becomes a disgusting, viscous slime. All right. Well, uh, so I, anyway, it was it was interesting hearing. On two different commentaries, the director and the writer talking about what was missing from their vision and where it came from. Because on one hand, he kind of made it, he would say they, oh, they cut that out. They, you know, he never pimped on 
Mora, the director. Uh, he, he, he's just like using this generic and he, and he didn't sound bad. It was just, you know, Oh, you know, and then a couple times he said, Oh, they cut this exposition out, but then it came in later. So his memory was that it, someone else said it earlier in the movie. And instead it was the judge when they got him getting ready to put him in the jail cell. He spills to everybody what's going on. Right. Uh, but anyway, all right. So, uh, we should probably, no. Oh, I yeah, I haven't been able to do it yet. Tag lugs, Richard. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> Seriously, record her doing that. <laughs> I am. I could cut that out. I could cut that out. I'll <laughs> no, no, I'll make you sound. Share my shame. That's what I say. Share in my shame. Share my shame. <laughs> Dear God. All right. Uh, Chad, I did not go searching for extra taglines on those. They came for him. What yeah. you see is what you get. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> is it that bad? Oh, God. Mm. This motion picture contains scenes of graphic and violent horror. Beware. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that's a, I can't say I wasn't warned. That's a weird tagline. Like, but yeah. It is. He was on the verge of becoming a man. Eda. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Was that the... Oh, well, I'm not going there. Never mind. Uh, oh, yeah. We, <laughs> we dare you to watch the last 30 minutes of this film without screaming, covering your eyes, or running from your seat. Huh. Okay. That means shit your pants. Yeah. I'm kind of scared mm -hmm. people. Away. Running from your seat. Dare you. So what do we get if we pass that dare motion picture yeah. person? Free popcorn. Oh, okay. I'm just Deal. guessing here. And this is what I say before every tagline uh, segment oh. on here. Kill me, please kill me. Before it's too late. <laughs> uh. okay. He says that. He says that in the hospital bed. Yeah. I mean, these are these are all yep. uh, okay. the final tagline or whatever these are. <laughs> this motion picture contains scenes of extremely graphic and violent horror. Not beware, but warning. Yes. Oh god. Wow. These well, are the, these are like odd sad. odd ones. <laughs> they like are, they, they don't are. they don't make sense as taglines. Mm. I feel like they added one extremely of us step to the first into Hollywood one then... as professional tagline writers and uh, we you... become rich because yeah. oh oh yeah we clean it. It kind of seems like it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't yeah. know who's doing them, but and that's been <laughs> taglines with Chad. Yep. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use that with the music. Maybe we wouldn't get rich. Maybe <laughs> maybe the, the problem is tagline writers are paid like pennies. Yeah. And that's probably true. Fifty that years from now, when uh, they're looking at this, and we we're all gone, and somebody says, "What the hell is that? That's just as bad as the taglines." <laughs> well, let's see some of those <laughs> taglines. And here's the poster. Beware. I mean, you know, I, I actually like that poster. I love it's, very, it's very simple, but graphic and, and yeah. can't really tell what it is. Can't yeah. tell what's going on. So also to go back to the writing, the, the novel. So yeah, the producer, Eugene Levy, the writer of the novel, had turned in like a one and a half page treatment and the title. And, and that idea got purchased by like random house and oh, the, those the, the producer days. saw that and bought it basically for the title yeah mm -hmm. when they made the movie no other the then the writer proceeded to have a bunch of domestic problems going through a divorce oh. had not written the novel before the movie came out oh so dear. tom holland basically had what? to write it off this the the novel has nothing to do no, with this movie. No. I think I've got a. I think I've got a graphic with the two copies of of the novel. You do, which I'd like to find. Yeah, it's see. I, I, listen, I remember that a, bottom one. I remember the. Bottom I remember one. the top one. There was a time when oh, you okay. could go into any drugstore in the country, and there were racks and racks of paperbacks with lurid mm. titles and gross poster, you know, covers, yeah. and they were like, and my parents wouldn't let me buy them, and they were just so cool looking. I was like, when when I'm a grown up man, I'm gonna buy all these <laughs> things. But unfortunately, I grew up, and they they don't have them in drugstores anymore. It's a shame. People don't read. So I wonder. No, they don't. No. So you got, I can't. I don't see the uh, 
paperback logo on the top one, but that looks a lot like it might have been a zebra or popular mm -hmm. library cover. Bottom the one's Berkeley. I, I love look at this tagline, Chad. The haunting smell of fear. Ooh. Ooh the smell yeah, that's of gross. Fear. I don't know what that is, but it isn't good. Mm -hmm. I don't like Does it. Does it have anything to do with oral sodomy? Poopy. It Probably. Might. Anyway. So he still got credit. You know, they bought it. He had, you know, so yeah, there you yeah. go. What a time. So we mentioned uh, Fleet. Pterodactyl Moore. women from Beverly Hills. What was yeah. that? I okay, know. Philip Mora. Listen, here's the thing with Philip Mora. When you read his history, he started out as like a very uh, avant-garde, uh, experimental filmmaker, art stuff and everything. And then when he made movies, he made crap. He made, you know, you know like, I, I don't know if either he's playing three-dimensional chess and what we see as absolute garbage is his socially relevant commentary on things. So the werewolf, uh, you know, two is actually much deeper than we imagine. Or I feel like it's like he wanted to make a movie uh, that was just basically two people staring at each other and no dialogue for an hour and a half, but no one's going to finance that. Here's the howling two. And he's like, fine, just hack it out. Just absolutely <laughs> hack it out. So I don't know if he's, he's an artist who I don't understand or an artist who just didn't give a crap, but they, there are some strange choices in here about the only one that's normal is communion. You know, I and, love the Howling Two, and I love the Howling Seven, the Marsupials. Of course you do, but you, Chris, you and I mostly agree on everything. But we like, we like the stupid stuff. Have any that of you seen so Re stupid, Return of Captain I Invincible? I am no, not. I don't know what that is. But you know who's in there? It's got some. It's Alan Arkin and and uh, Christopher Lee. I mean, it's got a great cast, and it's a little and bit Rip ahead Brown. of its time, and it's not very good. It's not very good, but you know, if you want to see Christopher Lee singing and dancing That's in almost funny. like a music video, um, it's it's got a really cool idea, but the execution was terrible. Well, he also did uh, a bunch of uh, now he did he did do a movie that I want to watch, and I think it's available online. Mad Dog Morgan that stars Dennis. You Hopper. know, that's actually that's actually a normal movie too. Um, yeah. But he also early on did a bunch of documentaries and that I want to watch. And I found one of them on, uh, I think it was on Tubi called Swastika. It's mm. about the uh, the rise of the Third Reich, like from 33 mm. to 41 or something like that. Um, but then if you look at his most recent stuff, there's one that's called Dracula Nazi Hunter, How I Learned to Love Christopher Lee. And then it's got a whole nother just and and drink atomic bombs. That's it. How I Learned to Love Christopher Lee and Drink Atomic Bombs. And the description wow. says it's about, you know, like a detailed history of Lee's time in the British Secret Service mm. and his involvement in the assassination of the SS Chief Reinhardt Heydrich in Prague. Um but I can find this nowhere and there's no ratings on this, which kind of indicates nobody's ever seen it. Uh, it was supposedly 2021. So I, I don't know what's going on with mm. that and why anybody would come <clears throat> up with a title like that. Um, the Dracula Nazi hunter is kind of cool, but the rest of that stuff, who knows? Yeah. But then, and then right below that is I was a communist werewolf, and right below that was the Hunchback <laughs> Bee of Notre Dame, and then Custer at Nuremberg. It's like he's does, yeah. does these weird uh, historical connections to. It's it's kind of like he starts out as like a young Ken Russell, and then very quickly segued into an old Ken Russell without the <laughs> successful Ken Russell part in between. But I, I keep going back to Return of Captain Invincible because I really wanted to like that movie. It's got it's a it's a musical with songs by the guy who did Rocky Horror, Richard O'Brien, and mm -hmm. some of them are pretty good. And then there's a song called called Bullshit, and it's just thirty seconds of a guy saying that over and over again. I've wanted to get a copy of that because I could use it so often. Um, <laughs> yeah. But he's an odd, to he's a loud an odd fellow. I, you know, I, I can't look at yeah. any of these films and see a cohesive world vision in yeah. them. Somewhere in those commentaries, I heard somebody 
one of them just kind of joked with him and kind of went, well, he's French. <laughs> well, that does make sense. Yeah. There, there's yeah. some there's a French some Australian. I mean, come on. Yeah, this is I think is his probably his best movie. Although I haven't, I do want to see Mad Dog Morgan. Uh, hmm. It's an Australian flick outlaw. Dennis Hopper hmm. plays him. All right. Uh, so we have mentioned the cast. Paul Clemens does an absolutely amazing job and does he get mm -hmm. any cred out of this you look at his credits and nothing happens well there's right. an interesting here's a little bit of tea okay yeah um at some point after the movie poltergeist which was must have been around this time when poltergeist came out um paul clemens and another writer claimed that they had sent a haunted house story to spielberg or whoever made oh, that them. was paul clemens okay yeah and that some of their stuff had been ripped off and that never went anywhere and i don't think it would because really it's hard to copyright the idea of a haunted house and 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 things that happen in a haunted house even if some of the events that happened were pulled right. directly from that there's nothing in there's nothing in the movie poltergeist that really screams absolute originality no one's ever thought of this before we we can we can claim it as a copyright so it didn't go anywhere and as just a tip for aspiring filmmakers out there going after steven spielberg is probably not going to make you super popular in Hollywood, I mean, even though yeah, this is a but younger, it, you if know. it happened, he should have. But he should have had a lot of proof first. You got to have a lot for yeah. You got to have a lot of proof. Have any proof? And I'm not saying it happened or it didn't, but mm -hmm. like, it, but it does. It does off feel awfully like this is a promising career that suddenly mm -hmm. was strangled in the crib. Yeah. Wonder why. Mm. And it's right bad. or wrong, and it's definitely wrong. If you're an actor in Hollywood, you are there is nothing more replaceable on earth than an actor yeah. in Hollywood. Oh, well, I don't know. Anyone you know? on set other than the director. <laughs> Let's be real. Anyone. There's plenty of sound. If you're gonna pay, you know, like yeah. everyone's replaceable. Except they do um, seem to cater to the directors. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just I thought. He did an unbelievable job in this. Yeah, to I be did. able to play that character Bad. and go through that. And I didn't see, he didn't miss a note. I didn't once look at that and go, well, that's, you know, clearly crappy acting. I was mm -hmm. thoroughly impressed. Mm -hmm. Me too. So, yeah, there he is with the, uh, whatever it is on his back. Mm -hmm. Skin starting to yeah, split, what, I guess. Yeah, that's the whole... That's so... It's so weird. So weird. It doesn't make any damn sense. Just saying. No sense. I, 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 I did want to mention, before we go farther, though, that, that Tom Holland, this was his first... Mm. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's his first movie script, but he goes on to do Psycho 2, mm -hmm. Cloak and Dagger, Fright Night, Fright mm -hmm. Night 2, Child's Play, The Langoliers, Thinner, uh, which he also directed. So anyway, that, yeah, that's too bad. He, he, he had that's one you movie. don't want on your list. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> Langoliers. My least, no, oh. thinner. It's my least favorite. Stephen King game. adaptation. Hmm. I'll take the Easy. Langoliers for that one. I can't stand yeah. them. I like, I like, I like thinner. thinner. I like thinner. Yeah. I, well, I like, I love the book. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, there we go. That, yeah. But the, just the movie, man, I was so mm. disappointed. I was like, concept, cool. So I worked at a bookstore fail. when Thinner came out. Mm -hmm. And that's when the whole Richard Bachman you know, thing kind of. Stephen King and what? Richard Bachman thing What's came that? out. I don't know what that is. He wrote under well, the, the pseudonym the, Richard Bachman just to see yeah. if the book oh. would sell even without the Stephen King. And name. that wasn't the first one. That was the and fifth did it? one. No, they didn't. So then at some point he said, oh, by the way, I'm actually this guy. And then they sold like hot yeah. cakes. So you can add, That's like in most Stephen King sections, there'll be a uh, trade paperback called the Bachman books or Bachman novels. Mm -hmm. And that'll have four of them. The first four, like the long walk. Uh, uh, running man. Running man. Um, apt. Is that? Apt no, pupil, I think. Was it? That's was in it a different work? season. Um, anyway. Oh. 
You're right. But but four novels he wrote under a different name because he just wanted to see, you know, once you get big. Wasn't there one where it's like a kid holds a classroom hostage? And that's say, apt pupil, but that's in different no, seasons. Uh, no, there, there was that was the entire. This was the entire book was just this kid holding. Oh no, you're right. Hostage. You're right. Yeah. Um, you're right. Uh, I think it's one of the few that has never been adapted because they're afraid to make that into a movie and then have some. Kid yeah, I think, were, and, uh, I think they were. I think they were starting starting to, it. and then. Uh... And then Crystal, if you see the movie The Dark Half, that's very mm-hmm. much kind of based on. That's about a, a writer who has a pseudonym. And he gets oh, yeah. rid of the pseudonym and then it comes to life. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like Stephen King writing a story about Richard Bachman. It's, okay. it's like at so many levels, it's like an onion. The one you're talking about is Rage. Rage, yeah. 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 And that was in 77. And then The Long Walk, 79. Road Work, 81, which for the life of me, I can't think of what that oh, was. Oh, I don't remember that one at uh, all. And then The Running Man in 82. Then Thinner. And then at some point, he wrote this one called Blaze. Uh, that was that either. He uh, also did well, that's, one. That's long after. He also Go did ahead, a couple yeah. of books that uh, I think King did one called Desperation, but then he drew. He wrote another book with the exact same premise as Rich, as but he wrote it as Richard Bachman. The very regulator. confusing. Regular, yeah, very ripping off yeah. King, yeah. But he, yeah, and the book ripping the, off the books are interesting. <laughs> that these two books came out at the same time. And there was something about the the dust jackets, like uh, maybe they ran over into each other or something. Yeah. I can't remember. But, but I, I remember, just I read. That's uh, cool, though. That's a cool. I read one. the uh, desperation, and then I turned around, bought uh, the regulators. I said, "What the hell's going on here? I said, Is this the same same book, same characters?" I, I didn't. I didn't get it at the time, but. Man, I should I should start a rumor that Neil Gaiman wrote a book about a lawyer and a demon called Rom. Yeah, called Rom. <laughs> <laughs> or just start yeah. telling everybody I'm actually Neil Gaiman. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah, right. Well, All right, the pictures um, look much better. I wanted to mention too the 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 producers are no shakes either. The Harvey Bernhard and Gabriel Kotska. So Harvey Bernhard was a producer for the first four omen films oh good for mm-hmm. him um the, the lost films. boys yay yeah. lady hawk and the wow. Goons. oh i wow. love okay. lady hawk. Jeez. Mm-hmm. yeah lady hawk and great. gabriel kotzka was a producer for kelly's heroes the taking of pelham one two three love that yeah. one. parallax view mm-hmm. meteor wow oh what a, a disaster film so these two guys came together so we had a we had a lot of the actors and the producers came from a lot of success and experience, I think. So let's see, you got one here for BB. She was so good in this. These are shots yeah. in this. She was. She was. And she does some great double takes on uh Ronnie Cox's character when Ronnie's stuck. Oh, see, he's a all American boy, and she's mm-hmm. given him their basic side yeah. eye. Now she's she's probably most known to horror and science fiction fans as the as Doctor Carol Marcus in Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. She's yeah. uh, you know William Shatner, Captain Kirk's love interest. Which it was right around this time, year or two, give or take a year or two, wasn't it? And she's got and, that quality that worked. I mean, she held her own against Kirk. You know, she I was think. not just some green space bimbo. You know, she was also in Tremors, I think. I think she was in Tremors. She was the mother of the little girl on the pogo stick, I think. Oh, is that her? Um, been a while since the other thing I I thought was kind of interesting is her daughter is Samantha Mathis. Oh, yay! What does she do? Who, uh, she's in the the, volume. Oh, (laughs) okay, she was also in The Strain. Under the Dome, mm. mm-hmm. uh, The Punisher, two thousand and four, so uh, Broken Arrow. She was the uh, like. I forget was she a helicopter pilot? Oh, she's an American she... Psycho, guys. Mm. Duh! Yes. I was like, wait a second, that my yep. favorite. Her and Reese also the Clove Hitch Killer. Killer. And you remember, Crystal? We did that movie when Hulu had the Into the Dark series. The yeah. uh, uh, they had the one where the mother 
thought her son was a serial killer, so she was creating clones mm -hmm. with slight genetic oh, yeah. modifications. That was that was her too. Samantha yeah, she's Mathis. been in so all anyway, kinds of stuff. Um, she's been in something else more recently. I just can't remember what it was. Was she? It, was she in Pet Cemetery? The new Pet Cemetery? Ah, uh, she was. Okay, yeah, yeah that was the it. Bloodlines. Mm -hmm. I was like, God, I saw her. I saw her just recently. So anyway, and she. Uh, she died fairly young from uh, breast cancer, I think. What? She, BB. Samantha BB, Mathis. I'm sorry. The oh, the, BB, I was like, BB wait, Beth. what? I'm sorry. What I'm sorry. And in fact, <laughs> she died in 1996, which is the year that Broken Arrow came out, which was kind of a big flick with uh, hmm. John Travolta, Christian Slater, and and Samantha Mathis, her daughter. Okay. She's, she's great in this movie. That's a, I, there's not a there's not a missed spot in this movie. So there we got Ronnie Cox, L. Q. Jones. He's great. L. Q. Jones. L. Q. is the best. Yeah. Oh come on, he he directed um, Boy and His Dog, mm -hmm. and and is just one of those guys. He shows up. He you know he's instantly good at what he does. He was in was he not in um, the Wild Bunch or some Sam Peckinpah? Yes. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Um, also he feels like he's not acting. The Brotherhood of Satan. Oh, yeah. Brotherhood <laughs> of Satan. There you yeah. go. He looks like he has what? I, he he doesn't feel so like like an actor. Like he feels like a real. He's a real sheriff that they brought in. We need someone to play a sheriff. I can do that. I'm a sheriff. And he, then he does it and goes, "Yeah, that guy is pretty much a sheriff." Unlike yeah. Steven Seagal. Seagal. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Seagal couldn't bad. play Steven Seagal or Herschel Walker. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, if you guys remember, just to remind you, we talked about this on seventies. But Crystal, his real name, LQ Jones, his real name is Justice E. McQueen, which is a great. Why name. would he yeah, that's change a way better his name. name? Well, he took his name from the first character he played in a movie in a war movie called Battle Cry. His character's name was LQ Jones, and from then on, he's billed as LQ Jones. I mean, he looks like an LQ Jones, to be honest with you. He does. Justice, it works. The first, Justice the Queen Justice, is awesome. Isn't that's it? a <laughs> Justice is a cool name. Like, I'm um, obviously McQueen is good too, but just Justice. People would never believe it. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, he looks yeah. more like an LQ Jones to me. He does look like an LQ Jones, though. <laughs> it does. It works for him, doesn't it? Yeah, like, it does. hey, yeah. yeah. He's great. Mm -hmm. And then down in the bottom there, you've got some uh, Logan Ramsey. Uh, Logan Ramsey. Star Trek episode. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to have to expand this to see who else we got there. Uh, Battlestar Galactica. Oh, those, uh, those are all Mindy. Logan Ramsey. Yeah. You know, Nash, just one yeah. of those guys showed up in a lot of things. So I got to tell you, the hamburger scene. He was the uh, newspaper owner, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that hamburger scene was incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah, and I I thought he was actually going to be a pervert or something. He was yeah. weird. I you think that was still fun. on the table. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he had fun. Uh, Paul Clement said it was one of the hardest scenes he's ever done because uh, Logan Ramsey kept making him laugh. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say yeah. I was. I was <laughs> I like it rare. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Because you don't have to wait so long. All right, Logan, we're like going to have to have you tone down the <laughs> handling of the <laughs> camera, okay? Yeah. Oh, he does that punch into the meat and then. Oh, yeah. Uh, with those, the hands with the. Then, then when, I, I, when, I did uh, not see him wash his hands. So I'm sorry. but mm -mm. No. And, and when they get in the big free for all, then, and he's got. Meat the shoved foot in his against face the wall. And his, mm -hmm. his foot. Uh, there's meat all yes. around in his toes and on his. So face. gross. Ugh. No, you'd have. Mm, 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 no. Mm, mm. I just thought that was really well done, and everything about it—the camera mm -hmm. angles and all that stuff. What bothers me is somebody out there is like, "Oh, that's so sexy." Uh, <laughs> With the hamburger all between no. his toes and everything. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Doc. <laughs> I mean, there's some food. Some food, folks. Yeah. Sorry, Doc. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I, these other acts. So Don Gordon plays the judge, and he has mm -hmm. that super bad. He's so good. Toupee on. I did not know it was a toupee. I thought that was his hair. Um, I don't know who these guys are though. Okay, so. <laughs> I knew that wig was coming off before the end of the movie. That's... And it did. Yeah, in a way. With with no, uh, he just like, whips it off. He Lex just... Luthor at the end of Superman when he yanks it off. <laughs> <laughs> so he's he's great too. He was uh, one of his. Uh, he was real good friends with Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. uh, they met when he did an episode mm -hmm. of Wanted you Dead know, or you Alive. You Steve McQueen. All it makes me think of is Justice McQueen now. Yeah, Justice so McQueen. Now, yeah. McQueen. Yeah. Uh, his first role was in, well, maybe not his first role, but he was uncredited as a soldier in The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Oh, wow. Back in 53. Wow. And then sure, to carry the Steve McQueen <laughs> stuff forward, he was in Bullet. He was uh, one of the one of his cop partners in Bullet. Um, he was also in Papillon and the Towering Inferno, which Steve McQueen. But he was into uh, science fiction stuff in the 60s. He did a couple episodes of The Twilight Zone and a couple episodes of The Outer Limits and some of The Invaders. Nice. And then also ZPG, Zero Population. Oh, yeah, Zero Population. Wasn't that with um, Oliver Reed? Yes, yes. Mm. And The Exorcist 3. Uh -huh. Oh, was that was movie? a good one. I liked Exorcist 3. Yeah. Especially coming off of number two, Exorcist 3 really looked really well, good. Three, three was a, <laughs> excellent movie. I love Brad Dorif. Yeah, in yeah. In yeah oh, yeah, Brad. Um, but he, he uh, in this movie, I thought he does great because he starts off being kind of a smug jackass because he's a judge and he gets to do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, he's turned into kind of a sniveling yeah. Wimp. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the creature's crazy. coming after him. <clears throat> and he gets beheaded. We have some very satisfying kills in that. There are some good kills. It was I, quick, too. That was hilarious. Like, I wasn't, I didn't see that coming, I'll tell you. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, and uh, BB Besh's reaction as uh, <laughs> Mrs. McCleary, um, they pull the head out, and then his neck starts spouting blood, and she kind of, she almost does kind of a gag yeah. reflex mm -hmm. take. Um, it's good stuff. Who else? Uh, oh, Ronnie Cox. I mean, you know, he was. Dick in, Jones. Uh, you know, well, he was he was great in RoboCop, and he was also in The Car. Oh, one of Doc's favorite movies, seventy-seven. Yeah. And I thought there was something else. Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea, that's right. Oh, yeah. I, for some reason, remember him from, and I can't remember the name of the series, something about Apple. Apple's Way. Apple's Way. He I played actually watched name Apple. Yeah. It was only on for one season, but I, I watched it. Yeah, I remember it. watching it. Well, oh, wait, what's the big one we remember before? Deliverance. Yeah. Well, yeah. Great, <laughs> great movie. Great well, movie. yeah. We should do, yeah. we need to do that on, 70s because even though it's not technically a horror movie, it scared the crap out of me. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah, oh, yeah. the way he said it, he's like, Well, yeah, duh, that's it. Yep, you got it. Deliverance, mm -hmm. he does the dueling banjo scene, and then mm -hmm. uh, but he doesn't squeal like a pig. So he got I was about to it. say, Squeal like a pig, I boy. I mean, yeah, that's that was Ned Beatty. Uh, he got the yeah. short straw on that scene. Isn't Ronnie Cox the one that kind of lurches up and goes over? No, that's uh. Who's the fourth guy? Yeah, I can't remember. Guy who ends up, guy who yeah. ends up scratching his own back with his elbow or something. Yeah, um, great. All guy. righty. Uh, so Don Gordon. Don Gordon's a fun. He's another guy that I, this 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 film is filled with guys mm -hmm. I watched growing up. Uh, R. G. Armstrong as the doctor. Yes. When they the doctor when mm -hmm. they get there. Every movie that he is in. They must figure this must be a game with screenwriters. And, oh my God! 
every movie. That's his like signature <laughs> line. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Well, I found out something about him I didn't know, and maybe you mentioned it before, Chad. Did you know that he played the Sandman in the Metallica video? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. All shaved and. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. I I pulled it up and watched it, and uh, oh my god, that is him with a bunch of like, I don't know, makeup on, making him look like a. He was in, he's been in a bunch of stuff we did. He was in Race with the Devil, hmm. uh, yeah. The Car, and one we haven't done yet, but we've mentioned many times, Devil Dog, The Hound of Hell. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the sequel, Race with the Devil in the Car. So Yeah. <laughs> Evil Speak <laughs> with Clint Howard. Yeah. Uh, Children of the Corn. He's the gas station guy, right? Oh, oh, that's memorable. Yeah. That sort of that weeds good. out the people coming into town. Yeah. Um, and he, I, he's listed as in the Predator, but I can't remember what he was. I, I suppose he was. He a, was one of the generals. General. Yeah. Um, general. Yeah, I can't remember his name in there, but he was one of the generals. Well, he did six episodes of Friday the 13th, the series, and uh, five episodes of Millennium. Millennium. So, what a great series. He's a great guy. Mm-hmm. And I got to get this in because I haven't been doing it lately. He did two episodes of The Texan. Okay. It stars Rory Calhoun. Oh, Rory, Rory. Calhoun. Yes. It's okay. a series from the late 50s that starred Rory, Rory Calhoun. Um, and he was best friends with Andy Griffith. Oh, that's cool. Who's not a good friend uh, of Andy Griffith? I yeah. suppose. I suppose. Um, LQ Jones. Well, oh, and then the dad. And I, you know... This is a guy I recognize a lot, but John Dennis Johnston, who plays the girl's dad. Oh, yeah. Platt, yeah. Yeah. He's like, he just plays the greatest villainous yep. rednecks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he had that nailed down. He's horrible. Mm-hmm. I didn't see much for him in terms of uh, genre stuff except communion. Mm-hmm. And then the, uh, of course, Meshach Taylor. Designing women. Mm. Oh wow! Oh wow! And Dave's world. Dave's world. Uh, it was a, remember that a one. series about Dave Barry that starred Harry uh, Connick Jr. No, Harry. I'm not Harry Dave, Connick, but uh, the guy judge in the night court. court. Yeah. Right. Right. Um. But he was in Damien Omen Two and. The Howling. Yay. So another another good actor. And finally, Luke Askew, who plays Dexter Ward, the mortician, who <laughs> is exactly what I don't want morticians to be like. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, you again. What the fudge? Oh, you kids. I see gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm he, gonna he's get perverting you. with that woman's uh, corpse there, but then he gets mm-hmm. he gets uh, he gets embalmed. Yeah, no less than he deserves. Yeah, he gets the he comes in and jabs one of those whatever that's called a trocar or a, I don't know the tube that he normal people don't care what that is, Jeff. Uh, don't you want to know what that is? I do. All right. I think I bored everybody with all the curiosity, but I, I friggin' loved them. I loved them. Yeah. That's it. Every 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 time somebody came on the screen, I went, "Holy crap!" I know that guy. Yeah. Um. All righty. Um. And then finally, uh, the mu- the music. Les Baxter. He did all the music for the uh, Poe movies. Oh yeah, yeah. In the sixties. I liked. I agree. I like the music oh. in this, but I wish it had been toned down a notch. Not not in anything Les Baxter did, but sometimes it was so overwhelming. It it just made me think of more of a TV movie, where they would kind of crank up the volume on mm. on the music. Oh yeah, uh, you know, take I away know, some of the I, subtleties. It didn't bother me, but I. So it was weird how they didn't get rid of that. 
you know, we never we never got a cicada, but we still got the cicada noise sometimes. You meant I think you mm-hmm. mentioned that. Though. Any final comments on this movie or anything else we want to talk about? I like this movie, so yeah, yeah me know. too. I mean, I don't know where I got. I think I mentioned last week. I think I got it in my head that this was a video nasty, but it wasn't. It was not on the list. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, I, I, um, I guess it could have been, but it wasn't. Well, there there is one more scene I, I wanted to mention. Hmm? <laughs> the interrupted love scene in the swamp. Oh, the, the dog. dog with the hand. The That's always hand. listen. I love I hate that. When dogs do that. I love when dogs do that. Whether you're talking about a <laughs> Kurosawa movie or or anything else, there's just nothing funnier than a dog. The smaller, the better. Picking up a, a dismembered human body part and walking around like it's a sausage. Yeah. It's here. Just, I found this for you. Brings a smile to my face. Drops it right on her head. Yeah. yeah. Look what I found, Black. <laughs> Isn't this delicious? Yeah. Totally ruined the love scene. Way to go, dog. Man's best friend indeed. Do you guys know anything about the? Uh, you, you, I think you mentioned the special effects guy, uh, Tom Berman. Oh, Berman's great. Berman, yeah. <sighs> Berman a did a lot of great stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd have to look up to see. You know, he was one of the main. Whoop, he Sorry. was one of the people. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Tom Berman Studios did a lot of cool stuff, but I would need to. Didn't he do cat? Oh, people? sure. Oh, he probably did. That no. looks like a. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, uh, 78. Mm-hmm. And um, he, was, he was nominated for a Academy Award and Scrooged. Um, oof, Wikipedia's not helping out at all. I thought he did Cat People. I love Cat People. Me too. That's one of the ones I've wanted to do, but it's it's not often. Um... Are you talking about the '80s one, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. '82. Okay, yeah. He did. I know do there's that. a there's one from the '50s. Yeah. I think, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, the hand. Oh, uh, '40s. Christmas. Yeah, okay. and a classic, yeah. wonderful movie. But I, for once, um, the remake did some great stuff. Very different movies, but yeah, really good. It isn't it like Rutger Hauer or something. I can't Who? remember. Uh, the, the new one? No, it was uh, Malcolm McDowell and uh, Nastasha Kinski. Nastasha Kinski yeah, and uh, yeah. Hurd, Hurd, John Hurd. Right? Or wait, or. Yeah. Mm. I know Ed Begley Jr. gets his arm ripped off. I'm trying to remember yeah. who else was in. And who is yeah, the John Hurd. John Hurd. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That happens early on. Annette O'Toole, I think, Ed might Begley have been in there. Yes, you're right. Paul Schrader is the movie. The, um all right uh yeah he did some great stuff and i as soon as i saw his picture i knew i'd seen i've seen an interview with him and i wish i could remember off the top of my head what it was about Hmm. i think it was about somebody else's career Hmm. and it would have been something we did there's was he involved in uh who are you talking about tom berman yeah, Tom Berman. Oh, Planet of the Apes. Yep, that's he it. He did uh, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Those were his makeup effects in that. Frogs. And and Chad's oh, favorite. Chad's absolute 100% favorite movie. 1981's. You know what I'm talking about, Chad. Yep, no. it's The Hand. No. I, don't, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Food of the Gods, Island of Dr. Tremendous. Moreau, The yeah. Man Who. A man, oh well, there you oh. go. Talk about black. We would have caught hell prophecy. Oh, wow, God. just have my yeah. bloody Valentine. Happy birthday to me. Yet, looking at his uh, IMDb page, what's probably really been his bread and butter is not these. It's doing things like Monk or CSI. I mean, doing mm-hmm. more straight makeup effects and everything, uh, which probably pays better, you know, and gets more opportunity to do stuff than the occasional head blowing up and monster running around. Disembodied yeah. hand, you know, how often does that come up? Too often. Too so, often, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. As far as you're concerned. Okay. How's that feedback coming, Jeff? <laughs> I think we're oh. good. <laughs> well, we don't have a lot of feedback, but we've got a few. A little. People are busy. Uh, some lovers of Puppet Master. Yeah, holiday season is not a good time. So, and Puppet Master has only been out for a couple of days. 
So moving on to feedback. If you haven't seen this, where did where did you guys watch this? Was it on Tubi? Yeah. I believe so. Beast for them. So. Not for it's very much there. longer, though. I think it's got Oh yeah, it's only just, five days. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, so by the time this comes out, that'll be, be gone. gone. So maybe it'll, you maybe lose. it'll pop up someplace else, maybe. Um every 17th. Right. Uh, that's a good pick, Chad. I was a little leery of it. Yeah, being, Chad. Uh, Mm -hmm. I give Chad. I, I, I remember being really. I think at the time this, these, I know we talk about lots of rape and stuff, but I think at the time this was kind of pushing the. Yeah, I think uh, it, we didn't see that very much then. In the not not time. not as graphic as it was in this movie. At yeah. least. Well, even you remember, even um, humanoids from the deep was not as explicit as we yeah, all remembered yeah. it. There's something to be said when it comes to rape, you know, the less you show, the better, as far as mm. I'm concerned. It's more effective. Well, uh, yeah, there are later, like more recent movies that are far, far yeah, more graphic and realistic. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. That's good on your grave. Well, one of the, one of the things Morris said is me. he felt like if there was violence, there had to be some pain involved. Mm. You know, that a lot of times, movies now these action movies people get shot and sure. beat up and they just they just kind of shrug it off you know oh no there's a lot there's something to be said for making an unpleasant thing unpleasant to watch but there's also something to be said it's like just give me a break i just want to be entertained i don't need to feel bad okay <laughs> feedback let's go with uh let's see where do we start bill would you take the first one these are we just have three short ones for Puppet Master, episode 248. Is this our Daphne? It mm -hmm. is. Daphne Minari Ernsdorf. And am I pronouncing mm -hmm. that even close to right? Good. Good, because I tend to get these wrong. The lovely Daphne says, Puppet Master for Christmas doesn't get much better than that. Yay. <laughs> I love yes, that. Puppet Master was released on December 25th. Oh, so uh, it wasn't a bad pick then. Good. Hmm. No, and then one from Gregory Crosby. Chad, do you want to take that? Gregory says, my favorite moment in this episode, when Jeff casually drops that he'd never seen Puppet Master. Therefore, he watched 11 <laughs> out of 14 in the series just for this. Yeah. Wow. Never let anyone say you aren't taking full advantage of retirement, Jeff. That's what we say all the time. Yeah. Yep. Jeff is yeah, what I, I want to be when I grow up. Could could be out like there. Like eleven movies is like twenty two hours ish. Well, I had I had a couple I had a couple weeks to do it, so that's, that's a, true. I'm jealous. I just um, I think it would be kind of a nightmare, and I love Puppet Master, but some of it's just well, it starts to blur together. I I, yeah. I won't. Yeah, I'll admit that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I thought I was keeping them straight, but. When we start talking about them, I'm like, no, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. I do the same uh, thing with different franchises. I'm like, like when we talk about Saw, I'm like, uh, I don't remember which one that was. Yeah. You know, I the one the where they thing. did this. Yeah. Yeah. All I remember is the first one was uh, Carrie, uh, what's his name? Ellis Lewis. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's all I remember. Uh, and then the last one, I do remember the last one. And here we have one from Renee St. Aubin, Crystal. Take that. Ooh, a present for me. <laughs> Art. And then she says, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to my most favorite podcasters. Merry Aww. Christmas and happy holidays to you too, Renee. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, Thanks Renee. Renee. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Yes. So we got some puppet masters out there. I think as people drive home and, and you know, with the car full of kids, they'll listen to podcasts about. Well, the holidays movies. are like, it's hard to, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe when they get home and they're driving again for work or whatever. All right. Um, that's awesome. There's plenty of ways to stay in touch. Uh, send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or leave your comments on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel, Gruesome Magazine's H&R and DOH podcast Facebook group, or on the website at gruesomemagazine.com. Okay, that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. And if you were paying attention, this was episode 249, which means our next one, the first one recorded in 2024, 
will be episode 250. Ooh. Yay! It's crazy. And we're doing Gremlins. Gremlins. Ooh, Gremlins. This is technically a double tap, but the first time they did it was 2014. So and none it of will us actually be like yeah, none there. of us. So none of us, none of us were on there. So you haven't heard what we have to say about it. Mm -hmm. Did we like yeah. it or did we not like it? We'll solve that mystery in just a couple of weeks. Who and doesn't we like it? Everyone likes Gremlins. Like movie. Come on, like everyone. <laughs> Like that. This is a, this is a classic. You have to be a great. That is kind of a, one of the ugly, mean, ugly. It's kind of a holiday movie. It probably won't come out till like almost the end of January. But uh, oh, it's got a great story about Santa Claus and a chimney. Yeah, yeah. it's a total Christmas yeah. movie. It's wonderful. So anyway, all right, everybody. Thanks, Bill, especially with all your trials and tribulations today. Oh yeah. But, well, yeah, thanks for picking sorry. up my spirits, guys. It's that's a good way to end birthday day. I'm sorry. Crystal and Chad, uh, and everybody work. say happy birthday to Bill. And, you know, when you listen to this episode, send the positive ways. Happy birthday That's to Bill. That's right. I'll Whatever be even else. older. So. Uh, happy birthday. Yeah, but too. hopefully that car stuff goes well. And You know, I, I will say. I'm with the manatees. Yeah. Oh, forget about the car stuff and everything, but it is nice that here I'm 63 years old. I know I don't look it. Please, please don't protest. No, I got. I did the math. It checks out. Um, but <laughs> at 63, man, I just, I really feel like life's gotten better and better. I'm, I, have, I have a good marriage. I have great friends. Good. I have a job I like, but I'm getting ready for retirement in a few years, which, you know, Even so better. this is a good place <laughs> to be. It really is. And, then uh, it's mostly the, the folks, the many friends I've met, I got to go like, thank a bunch of people for wishing me a happy birthday on Facebook. It's going to take a few hours now. So. We go oh. recharge the batteries and uh but it's great and i uh, really appreciate you all and the fans some of whom are the people who thank me on facebook i gotta thank them it's just it's i uh, feel a lot of love and that gets you through that gets you That's through the little good. aggravations that life yeah. Has. yeah it does we love you bill thanks man we do love we you do. guys love you all uh, I, love you I love you guys too chad crystal thanks to you too thanks to everybody out there Jeff. <laughs> Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie in the 1980s in which we promise not to mention oral sodomy. As only decades of horror Just can I can't make that promise. Yeah, that's, that's a bold. Good night. Say good night. Good night. Bye, everybody.